Hey guys, Velo sent there, Galaxy 24. This bike's pretty cool because it's low to the ground. It's approachable with a step through. It's got a mid drive. And I just wanted to show you what the box looked like because it's actually a little bit smaller than some of the other boxes I've uh, received for electric bikes. And there's going to be some assembly and I'll, I'll talk about that, but it's clearly labeled this side up. Of course, when it got here, it was not, <laughs> it was kind of on one end. So hopefully the rack and everything is in good shape. And uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll go through what it's like to receive these. Cause I think they're predominantly online unless you're near like their flagship headquarters. So looking pretty good so far. You can see that this end, it's like the handlebars and the stem and that's all stuff that's pretty tough in the middle we got the fenders and the extra wheel and then at this end this is what I was worried about and this is actually the end that the box was on this is where the rack is rear fender right down there although the the tire sticks out further and then you know the battery and the light but the battery and the light are actually protected by the the rack tubing it looks like that protrudes a little bit more so this was probably you know kind of further back against the side of the box Maybe not, the, the tire is there, and then the top of it, they've got extra foam padding. So it looks like this is gonna be in good shape. Uh, I'll have to get it all the way out and assemble it and let you know, but so far, so good. Okay, so I tipped the box over and slid the bike out, and I was careful to slide it uh, with the disc brakes up because those are, they're sensitive. You don't wanna bend that because forever you're gonna hear like whoo, 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 whoo. It's gonna be passing that disc brake rotor. So. Uh, the wheel was separate. I took it, uh, you know, took the fender and stuff off and uh, everything seemed to be pretty well protected. Nothing's gotten scratched here. And I just wanted to point this out because as a single person, you know, lifting it out is a bit too much. So as long as you put it on your side and, and then are careful about which side so that the disc brakes are, are facing up, you should be good. So far, so good. And then there's this little tab here that you pull out that... Uh, it makes it so that the the disc brake calipers don't pinch together because sometimes they can stick together and then it's hard to get the the disc brake rotor in there so you also want to be careful not to pull on either of the brake levers before you put the wheel on and again you might need to remove this plastic clip a lot of the companies now have videos on unboxing but these are some of the key tips and tricks that i've discovered over the years and here we go we're all set. It's looking good. Left this on just to keep it clean. I'm gonna wash my hands and take a closer look at all the all the components and stuff here. Really excited about that Gates Carbon Belt Drive. The Enviolo setup. While we're at it, I wanna call out this nice box. Got like a magnetic clasp at the bottom. Got the charger in here. This is just the standard one and a half pound two amp charger that I see on a lot of other e-bikes. They had a bunch of good guides and stuff in there. So we'll toolkit everything you need to get the bike set up i didn't have to use any additional tools which was really nice a lot of times the tools that you're given are on like a you know kind of a a tool binder kind of thing and they're they're difficult to use and sometimes they strip and stuff you're putting on that light and then the the fender attachment right here was probably the most difficult thing getting the handlebar on not a huge deal that was really it you know seat front wheel handlebar looking good. So Avello actually gave me this bike, which is pretty cool. It's given me time to take it out for more rides and dig into it a little deeper than when I just borrow a bike from a shop or maybe visit the headquarters. I've got to say their support is outstanding. I've been working with them for many years. I visited their headquarters in Seattle, which recently moved to, to a bigger space. You can still go in and physically test ride and buy one of these, uh, but they're predominantly a direct order company. So you buy it online, they ship it to you, and you go through the same steps that I showed earlier. Um, the Galaxy ST was the first version of this bike, and then they, they moved to the Galaxy 24, which calls out these 24-inch wheels. That's the diameter. And now it's just the Galaxy 500, which comes back to that 500 watt Dapu mid-drive motor. This bike is really interesting. To me, it's, it kind of seems small, right? And, and I think that's partially because of those small wheels. They bring the whole frame down closer to the ground. Even though they're 24 inch wheels, they're actually a little bit closer to 26 inch effectively because of these 24 by 2.4 inch uh, let's see, where is the, the logo? There it is, CST um, Cyclops tires. They're, they're, they're a little bit wider, they've got nice traction, and they're a little bit taller, and that extra air volume gives you some comfort, because you'll notice there's no suspension fork, and there's no suspension seat post, though it does have this really nice 
sprung saddle. It's fairly comfortable. Cellar Royale kind of reminds me of like Brooks, which has these leather saddles. They're very hard and they take a while to break in. Whereas this one's just sort of artificial leather and a little bit more like plasticky and really cushy. It says Royal Gel over there. So maybe there's some gel infusion going on. So, you know, coming back to the bike, they say that this is good for riders up to like maybe 5'10". So if you're a petite rider or you're someone, I'm probably at the higher end of, of the height spectrum on this. I'm 5'9". I'm I have to raise that saddle really high to get those full leg extensions, but they did redesign the frame a little bit to, to sort of make it a little bit more comfortable for taller riders. And there's a lot of adjustability in this swept back handlebar here. We've got ergonomic grips. These are not locking, so they can kind of twist if you really bear down on them or if it's a hot day, they kind of twist. Not the end of the world. Uh, there's a lot on this bike that's that's really premium and all the components are fun to explore. But I, before I do that, I want to really highlight the frame again. So 6061 aluminum alloy, same with the fork. It is not steel. And if we come up to this stem here, see how it's like a 45 degree angle and it's extra long. I think it's like 120 millimeters and they've got these three spacers and then a tapered spacer at the bottom. So they're really putting that up high and then a little bit further out. And that gives you that upright, comfortable body position, allows you to spot traffic and just gives your back and neck a little bit of a break, I find. And again, it kind of brings the handlebars back to you because when you stand naturally with your hands at your side, they kind of flare out a little bit like that and you bring them up and it fits perfectly on the bar versus a straight bar. That's more of a mountain biking thing to get really you know, controlled and they tend to be wider. Um, or really narrow bars that are kind of uncomfortable and twitchy. This is a perfect setup. To me, this bike is almost like a cruiser in a way, just because of the handlebars and stuff. But, you know, it's probably more of a city bike and lots and lots of utility on this bike. So coming back to the wheels for a second, these are 13 gauge spokes, front and rear, 36 hole. So it's not 32, they've got extra spokes going on and they're a little bit thicker. Quick release in the front, this is a standard 100 millimeter hub spacing with nine millimeter axle, quick release skewer. And in the back, we have a 10 millimeter threaded axle because it's part of this Enviolo setup here. And so it's threaded, it protrudes on both sides and we've got these like 15 millimeter nuts with a one millimeter pitch. So if you wanted to do like locking hardware or something, there's no quick release back here and someone's gonna have to, you know, they would really have to mess with the bike if they wanted to remove that that rear wheel and that does include you thankfully these tires i'm told do have a layer of puncture protection built in i didn't see any markings for that and actually it seems like evelo has chosen the unbranded cst tires i was struggling earlier i'm like what brand is it that does cyclops oh yeah cst because there's some printing but it's really really small so back at the site i've listed out the, the tire pressure range and some of the other stats on these tires i like that they they kind of went with the toned down look. And even the bike, I mean, yeah, it says Evelo, but it's not like crazy color scheme or anything. I really like the dark gray and then light gray and they're metallic. So it's almost like a silver frame with a little bit of, little bit of accents. I was talking about the front of the frame before and I want to point out that they've got bottle cage bosses, of course, fender bosses, headlight mount, rack bosses. And then look at this. There's a split right here in the frame. And the reason they had to do that is because this has a belt drive. So it's Gates Carbon Belt Drive CDX, which stands for this center track that goes down um, the cog on the front and it aligns with that little split in the belt. So it keeps the belt from shifting side to side or falling off. But there isn't an actual break in the belt. So they had to do a break in the frame instead. And that does add to the price of a bike like this you know, in order to still be able to support 300 pounds max weight, which is what this bike is rated for, they, they really need to, to overbuild it and that costs money. And, and also this like floating sort of horizontal dropout down here, that's kind of expensive. And then the electronic shifting, which by the way, does run off the main battery pack up here. And I was asking like, well, that's really great because then you don't have to have a separate battery. But what happens when you, you've used all your juice, maybe you're doing throttle and you need to shift gears. And I was told that uh, the system automatically recognizes you're going low and they sort of, they force you to be in a lower gear. Lower gears are easier for starting, for climbing. So that's great because if you completely deplete the battery and you've no, you no longer got motor support, at least you're in a gear that's easy to pedal with. But after that, you won't be able to, to shift gears again. So it might be a good idea to bring that charger with you or just keep an eye on uh, the charge level. They do have a little 
you know, LED readout back here with four bars and there's five bar indicator on the display, which to me is, it's not as great as like 10 bars or a percentage indicator. We'll get into those details a little bit later. So coming back down here, 22 teeth and I think 52 teeth on that front cog. There's really no gears or derailleur, just this box right here. It's all sort of internal. And then the new Vinci system, which is, you know, this, this whole Enviolo, New Vinci, Optimized and stuff. This has been around for a long time, but they've been going through a lot of rebranding. And so these guys are using the automatic system. And then there's another one that's automatic with like a Q at the end. It gets a little bit confusing. I guess all I want you to know is that it shifts really, really intuitively. There are a couple of different shift modes, but it's all done electronically, which means that since this is a mid drive, you don't really need to worry as much about a mashing you don't need to worry about a derail you're going out of tune it's it's all internal but it, it does way more it does cost more so this bike is three thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars so roughly four thousand uh, dollars usd it's again predominantly sold in the united states and i think they do have some deals with alaska and hawaii so wherever you are they'll they'll make it work and i think they've got a really good warranty it's a little bit longer than some of the other companies really excellent phone support and then they also have like a trial period. So if you aren't able to come into their showroom and test ride this, cause you don't live in, in Washington state, you could still get this, try it for a little while, and then they'll work with you to accept and, and process a return, which to me is really great. This is an expensive purchase. You're spending more for a bike like this. There are bikes that are, you know, a fraction of the cost, maybe even less than half but you're not going to get that really efficient mid-drive motor. You're not going to get the Gates carbon belt drive. You're not going to get the automatic electronic shifting, New Vinci continuously variable transmission. And, you know, the cool thing about this is it's not stepped. It's not like gears where it's like one, two, three, four. There's, there's like these balls inside and then there's this pivot and it just smoothly pivots and it changes your gear ratio that way but there is this like traction fluid inside that adds some weight. It is a little bit more complex and I guess that's that's what you pay for when you know a lot of these like hybrid cars and stuff they're also using continuously variable transmission and I think the new Vinci company they actually do a lot of automotive stuff so you're getting I think some of the the best hardware and some really nice interfaces and and some other stuff so before we get into the electronics too much we've got this nice rack here uh, maximum 25 kilograms of weight. That's roughly 55 pounds. And and that does get taken down just a little bit, like two kilograms by the battery pack. Okay, so you are eating a little bit into the capacity, but I think the rack is pretty good overall. We've got this kind of, it's sort of enlarged tubing. And, and frankly, I'm not sure if it's gonna fit with all of the um, aftermarket panniers that hang on the side because a lot of them have these clips that sort of go down a little bit and they might, collide with the, the top of this battery pack and i almost thought like oh there's a pannier hanger down here but again fitting it in that might be a little bit tricky once the battery's on the bike as you see here okay they do have a pannier blocker right here which is really nice it's going to keep uh, bags and stuff from touching that rear tire if you turn and it's going to give you something to sort of latch on to a lot of them have hooks they do have a bungee loop right here so you can use bungee cords if you want and maybe some child seats like the yep maxi next they can kind of clamp on to the side of this i'm not an expert in this rack i'm just telling you what i perceive to be the case so you, you might be better off with just like velcro strap type of bags um, i do want to compliment that the the rack surrounds the battery completely okay so this rear light right here Linneo by Spinningo. This is two LED light, which is really nice. It's not going to take impact from the back if the bike's being shipped like we talked about earlier or if the bike tips onto its side. This whole battery is really well protected by the rack. But at the end of the day, this is still a rear rack battery design. It'd be nice if that weight was low and center on the frame. But then you compromise that deep step through very approachable, very low standover height and actually very low minimum saddle height on this bike too. So if we open up this quick release on the seat post collar. We can lower that, that seat pretty low, but I actually think the seat post is, is colliding here. So what you can do is you can take this off and you can use a hacksaw and you can cut that a little bit shorter and then the saddle will go all the way down like this and see it's not gonna actually collide with that rear rack. So they've done a really good job spacing. This is 27.2 millimeters, by the way. Very basic seat post, it's just single bolt clamp. You could swap this out for a suspension seat post or something else 
if you want to. There's a lot of possibilities here. I just want to complement this design choice right here. A lot of times you can also slide the saddle forward on the rails, but if that rack is too close, you're not going to be able to get so low. So for a bike that's just so approachable and kind of on the small side, I think the smallest riders, they said like 410 or something like that. That's, that's really short, a really petite rider. You know, look at this low saddle and then the handlebars are like way up high at this point, but, but you can rotate them back and down to make them easier to reach. You can also replace this stem if you want to with something a little bit shorter, remove some of those spacers. Lots and lots of choices with this bike. And again, just so approachable and so custom with that breakaway frame in the back and you know, the horizontal sliding um, dropouts and stuff, good stuff. These are 170 millimeter crank arms. So they're full size. That gives you a nice strong cadence, really comfortable. You're not gonna be like beating eggs. And then these Welgo aluminum alloy platform pedals with a rubber tread. So if you slip off, you're not gonna cut yourself on these. I think these are decent choice. And then the plastic fenders, right? So plastic tends to be lightweight and pretty resilient. It's not gonna ding or get rusty the way that aluminum or steel might. And then they've got these nice support arms. They're not the adjustable kinds that stick out. They're sort of wrapped around. And I think they look, they look pretty good. I think the, rattle, the fenders could be a little bit rattly. And if you look back here, one, two, three support points i've seen some bikes that have four support points so it would mount the fender would like connect to a rear rack and so in this case you can see how it might bounce a little bit but it's actually not making a ton of noise and i think that's because these are extra wide they're like 70 millimeters wide down here check it out we've got what i believe is a cafe lock or like a frame lock mounting point so you can have this like half of a circle thing that puts a rod through the rear wheel and that way you can sort of disable the bike if you're at a coffee shop or something you just want to dash in and out and you don't want to park it at the bike rack it's too much of a hassle too crowded you get a cafe lock and it's, it'd probably be compatible um, with this bike which is really nice the bike does weigh a little bit more and again it is kind of rear heavy we're just under 60 pounds. I weighed it several times. And I do have all of those specs and measurements back at the website. And of course, when you've got that much weight going on, it's important to have good brakes. So I like that they went with these Tektra Ariga Ecom. These are e-bike specific brakes. So they've got the brake line right here, and then they've got this extra cable, which is for motor inhibitors. So whenever you actuate these brakes, it not only sends you know a physical signal to you know grab that rotor, and these are dual piston calipers by the way um, but it's also sending a motor a, a signal to the motor controller that says hey you need to to shut off because this person wants to stop we don't want to be fighting that that motor and that is it's like a 90 newton meter rating on that motor very very capable 500 watt nominal is what they say up to like 600 watt peak even though this is the dapu 250 so i think technically it started out as like a 250 watt motor but they've got a custom motor controller and again in integrated with these brakes it works really well very satisfying i'm not having any trouble climbing and that's the thing wanting to be able to kind of override and control the weight of this bike and the speed with these brakes it's done really well tetra riga good stuff three finger levers adjustable reach so there's a little set screw in there so you can bring these in if you're someone with you know smaller hands maybe you're a petite rider and you, you know you're not able to reach as far or you're someone with big hands and you can leave them all the way out nice to have that you don't have that on mechanical disc brakes so this is another upgrade big 180 millimeter rotor up front as you stop a lot of your weight shifts forward and the stopping power happens with that front wheel in the front tire so that brake is excellent in the rear we have 160 millimeter rotor which is kind of standard it's okay you know it's fine especially given 180 up front and they might have gone with a slightly smaller size just because it does get crowded back here with the rack and they have this special mounting point for for the calipers again dual piston calipers back here a lot going on really nice setup you can see that there's these two bolts right here and that grabs the dropout and allows it to slide back and forth and then this screw right here can push it can push the whole you know sliding dropout back or bring it forward and the whole idea is that you want to keep tension in that belt and these are very reliable apparently longer lasting more reliable than a chain um, and very quiet very clean they don't have a chain cover but again there's not it's not like you're lubing this all the time it's not getting greasy the same way that a chain does so it, it that might have been a weight savings or a noise savings things we were talking about the fenders rattling a bit they really don't rattle that much the bike is pretty quiet and i want to point out that you do not need to leave the keys in the battery pack 
while you're riding. That's really nice. You can take them out and you'll be just fine. So let's go ahead and take that battery off. Uh, the first thing to do is twist to the left and that unlocks the pack. You can slide it out pretty efficiently. There we go. It's nice and tight, so it's not gonna rattle around too much. About 7.4 pounds for this battery, roughly nine pounds for that motor. And it says turn life, uh, but that's because they shipped this up to Canada and they were able to fill uh, for this destination. Normally this would be Greenway, which makes really high quality cells. And in most cases, Evelo is shipping with Panasonic cells. So that's excellent. They're like some of the highest quality, 36 volt, 13 amp hour, 468 watt hour. That's about average. Okay, and, and maybe a little low for this generation of bikes. I mean, we have the Bosch, which is what I use as almost a standard since they've been around for so long and they're such a big company. Um, Bosch batteries are like, they have the Power Pack 400, 500, now they have 625. So if this is 500, that's kind of in the middle, sort of average, keeps it a little bit lighter weight, a little bit more affordable um, in that case. You can use a lot of energy with that mid-drive, especially if you're using throttle mode, but you don't have to it can it can be very efficient if you're in the lower levels of assist and you're pedaling actively so i think that's that's pretty decent 18650 cells in there here is the little charging port on the back very accessible it's not like you have to bend way down low it's not like right now by the cranks or something like a lot of other e-bikes you plug in there and then the the cable can kind of get bumped um, so i'm going to go ahead and lock this i turn the key to the right let's make sure it's tight there we go okay it's completely locked it's secure to the frame you might have noticed there's a little power off button down here so that's another way you can kind of keep people from tampering with your bike if, if you're at the the rack uh, otherwise people could come up here and they just you know press this power button it says evelo comes to life very quickly i'm going to go through the the display in just a second but i do want to call out that uh, this motor controller is measuring pedal cadence rear wheel speed and pedal torque. So it's very advanced. It gives you up to 110 RPM support versus 105 on like the Bosch active line or 120 on the Bosch performance line. And same thing with some of the new Shimano and Yamaha motors. The higher RPM support you get, the more active the bike can be for like mountain biking and stuff. If you switch to a low gear and you're spinning, 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 the motor won't lag behind. For a city bike, I think 110 is is great. That's that's in line with Bosch's Active Line Plus motor, uh, which again I, I like to compare to. Although this is a heavier motor at nine pounds versus you know six or seven pounds on some of those other ones. Um, I think the benefit here is that this mid drive works with throttle mode, and very few of the other mid drives really do. So I'm going to complain here for a second because they've put this kickstand right at the center of the frame and it creates pedal lock. You can see a little scratch right there, which happened when I was walking the bike out of my yard earlier getting ready to film so you walk it backwards uh, and it collides and and then it doesn't automatically go forward you have to like kind of kick it up with your foot like that so for me that's a it's a little gripe but it's worth calling out Evelo's addressed a lot of the complaints i had in past iterations again the galaxy st or the the 24 um but they've lost the usb charging port uh, which which used to be on their display and stuff. They switched to what they say is a more reliable display. It's beautiful. It's very big and it's color. It's adjustable angle, not removable. So it could take some damage at the bike rack or just weather wear over time. Although these are all, you know, highly water resistant parts. You don't want to spray them hard, but you could kind of use like a, a damp a rag or something like that to clean the bike off if you wanted to. So this display, you control it with the button pad over here. Uh, as we, we did earlier, there's this power on, power off button. You just hold it for a couple seconds, it comes to life. If you tap that power button one more time, we go from this like daytime view to nighttime view. And that's cool because it's not gonna blind you as much. It's not gonna disrupt your night vision with like a super bright white screen. And then the lights come on when you do that too. So here are the two LEDs that I talked about in the rear. And then we've got this nice headlight as well that's designed to sort of aim down. It points where you steer because it's mounted to the arch of that fork. And since this is not a suspension fork, it's not like it's going to rattle around a whole lot. There are quite a quite a few cables going on up here, and I like the, the wire wrap that they've got. But you'll notice that they do collide with that light a little bit. And this was actually one of the hardest parts to assemble once the bike came. You have to like hold the fender there, put the bolt through and get the light on and then tighten, tighten, tighten. And you need like a wrench on this side 
and the little Allen key on that side to get it all lined up right. It took a minute. It was a little bit of extra dexterity and flexibility, but now it's working fine. And I even tightened up the bolts so that the light isn't getting bumped down or side to side. It's it's really feeling secure, but it it still feels a little bit vulnerable, just the wires and all this stuff going on. Thankfully, a lot of that is routed through the frame. It's as good as it kind of can be when you've got uh, you know, electronic shifting, you've got throttle mode, you've got this nice display, uh, brake inhibitors, shifters, all this stuff. There's a lot going on up here, and I think they just did the best they could with those wires, but I do want to point out that it's not the fanciest thing where they mount right through the stem or they, they limit those things. And frankly, I, I would rather have those motor inhibitors, for example, than not and, and have a little bit of a clutter going up here. And you might be able to zip tie this back or something like that. I'm just trying to review this as it came. So the display panel, back to, to how this thing works, I'm gonna press that power button again, switch it back to day mode where it turns the lights off. It can be a little bit tricky to read if it's really sunny. So I'm in kind of a semi shady spot purposefully so that you can see that display a little bit more easily, but you can see how glare starts to happen, right? Like that. So I guess keep that in mind. Once you figure out the display, you probably don't need to look down all that often. And I like that it's big and it's up high versus down low or a little thing over on the side. We've got plus and minus, and that allows us to change through the assist levels. It always starts in assist level one, one pedal assist, and the throttle is hot in level one. So if you accidentally bump that, you know, it's gonna take off and it's, it's pretty powerful, like we were saying earlier. So I think that's okay, but if you want to, you can always just press that minus button take it down to zero, and then the throttle completely disables. I like that the throttle starts from standstill in those five levels of assist, because in past iterations of, of these bikes, you needed to get going like, you know, four or five miles per hour before the throttle would kick in. And you had to do that all yourself. And to me, it was like, why do we even have a throttle? I want it to help me get going. So thankfully, I think that was one of the benefits of switching to this display and the Dapu motor. So they, good job, Evelo. They did a great job um, updating that. We have lost a few readouts on this display, like we've got an odometer, you've got a trip distance right here, but if you press set, I was expecting to get average speed, max speed, maybe some sort of range estimate or something, and we don't have that. All we have is our current speed, odometer, trip meter, battery capacity, five bars, as I mentioned earlier, 20% steps. It could, it could kind of leave you wondering when you're on that last step, are we at 20 or are we closer to zero? Because that's a big difference, and then it's going to automatically shift to the low gears and you're going to limp home. Um, and then this STD, like standard, I think that means like power level and none of that really changes. You just press plus or minus. And I like, I, these are fairly reachable buttons, even though you have to reach over the throttle. They're, they're, it's doable for me. I have medium sized hands, right? And so it's like, there's a bit of a reach going on. Sometimes when I press the buttons, like I just clicked it, I just clicked it again and it's, it's not changing. So it's like, I have to be pretty intentional and press um, almost like right in the center a little bit harder. And this is a brand new bike. So for me, the guys at Avello said, this is very reliable, but maybe it just takes a little bit more effort or force or something to get it to work. So see, I'm at two, I'm clicking, three, clicking, clicking, not working. Really make those intentional clicks. I hate to ding them for that because it's maybe it's just this one, the plastic on the buttons or something's a little sticky. It hasn't been broken in yet, who knows? But I wanna be honest with you guys, that's what I noticed. and. It could be a little distracting. You're like, I need the power. And then you press it and it doesn't go. You got to look down and eh, that's sort of a bummer. Um, so the other cool feature here is you can hold set. And then we get into the menu. You can clear the, the trip distance. You can adjust the brightness. So in addition to day night mode, you can take that brightness down, which is great if you're someone with sensitive eyes. Uh, speed limit. So it's default at 20 miles per hour, making this a class two electric bike since it has pedal assist and a throttle. Um, but you can you can actually raise that up to 25 miles per hour for like off-road mode, which is kind of cool if you're someone who's commuting or just riding off-road and maybe you're riding in the street and class three is allowed where you live. I think you could completely remove the throttle and make this more of a class three where it's high speed with no throttle. It, I guess it comes down to having choice, which I appreciate. Wheel size 24, even though I said these are like effectively 26 inch with the taller tires, I think they just leave it 24, it works fine. Change units from miles per hour to kilometer. Battery voltage is 36, like we talked about before. Advanced settings, so this is kind of interesting. Uh, you can set a password, so that's cool. Lots of good stuff here, save and exit. I think that's about it. 
uh, as far as all the different drive systems and stuff, but we haven't talked as much about shifting as I think we should because this is super, super fancy. You know, NVLO, New Vinci Optimized, Continuously Variable Transmission. We talked about the rear portion, but how about the user interface? This thing is cool. It's, it's just a twist shifter, but it's super easy. So I'm just using a couple fingers. It's super easy to use. A lot of times with mechanical shifters, whether it's trigger shifters or the twisters, they're so hard and it gets harder like the further that you, you know, you're stretching a cable and over time those cables get gunked up and stuff. Same thing for, for mechanical brakes. Usually the rear brake is more difficult to actuate because that cable has to go so far and over time it gets gummed up. So hydraulic brakes is awesome and then electronic shifting right here is is wonderful. It's really just, it's sending a signal and the shifting is happening back here. I'm gonna try to do this, you might be able to hear it. Pretty quiet. So there are two ways to use this bike. Um, one is the blue one, so you can see there's like a little pedal and it has like some motion icons around it or something. And you can say, I wanna be at a low cadence, pedaling really slow. Or you can say, I wanna be you know, pedaling fast. Um, and that's what I do, because I have knee sensitivity. I like to pedal fast. It's more efficient for me, and it's also good cardio. So I can say, well, I want a high cadence. When you set the cadence, the bike does everything else. That's it. You just say, this is how fast I want to pedal. And then the bike automatically adjusts that, and then it compensates with the motor. It's a very cool system. Now, alternatively, and the bike just automatically went to sleep here, you can say, oh, you know, I want to set this as like a lower, slower gear, and I don't want the bike to automatically adjust it for me. So I know that when the bike gains some speed, I'll be pedaling faster. Uh, but at lower speeds, I'm gonna pedal slow, it's gonna be hard. It's The bike isn't gonna automatically adjust. This is more like a traditional gear. You're saying high gear. And then when you go up here, you're saying low gear for climbing. And that's why it's like a hill, like the, the steeper the hill is or the further up the hill, that's the lower gears that, that you're choosing. This can feel a little bit confusing to, to even me sometimes. I'm like, well, they both deal with cadence sort of. I guess with the orange version, you're, you're telling it, I want to get a harder or easier gear. And with the blue one, you're saying, I want you to choose the gear and just help me to pedal at a, at a set cadence, a set pedal rate. I hope that makes sense. It's fun to kind of mess around with this stuff. And I guess everyone will dial it in for their, their own needs. But I think now is probably a good time to hop on. Before I do, I want to call out um, something else that I noticed. And it might just be this bike, but the rack is a little bit misaligned, a little bit to the left. And I, I thought maybe that's because of shipping. It got put on its side or something like that. This is almost like an aftermarket rack with adjustability down here. So that could probably be set up a little bit better. Same thing with the fenders. The fender, front fender was a little bit off. And I just think that's the case when you when you buy a bike direct online. I only use the tools they sent me. I'm actually not like a bike mechanic expert. So I just kind of went with it. I was like, this is probably what most people are gonna do. They're gonna put a few things on the bike and go for a ride. And it's working great. It's quiet, it's efficient. Let's get on this thing. So I just dialed in the seating position. Look how high that is. And again, keep in mind, I'm about 5'9", like 31 inch inseam. 410 to 510 is what they recommend for this bike. And they do have a bike called the Aurora, and it's also still a very approachable step through with a nice sort of gender neutral color scheme. And it has an even more powerful version of this Dapu. So if you're a, a larger rider, uh, or maybe you're just a guy and you feel like, you know, I want something that doesn't have that rear rack battery. I, I want like the mid frame battery. Check out the Aurora, that looks pretty cool too. I've tested a, an older version of it, but I haven't tested their latest one. So here we go. I'm just gonna start off, even though I'm in pedal assist level one, I got full throttle power and it's just based on how far I push that. I'm gonna use this going uphill a little bit and through some rocky, bumpy terrain so you can hear the fenders and stuff, see how quiet it is. Not bad. A little bit of float to the side. I was trying to see if I could kind of do the hands-free thing, even off-road. A little bit of rattling over here. And coming back to the tires and stuff, I do not have these at the highest recommended PSI, but they are a little bit more full. That's gonna be efficient for riding on streets and stuff, which is where this bike really shines. So there's a huge hill right here. I'm gonna go off the curb. That felt pretty solid for going off a big curb. And now, 
Try the hands-free again. Okay, that's good. I'm not getting a lot of speed wobble or anything, which is really nice considering that this has the rear rack battery. Sometimes that, that is a side effect. And, and speed wobble is where like the handlebars will shimmy like this as you gain speed. And it's sort of unnerving. So here we go, I'm coasting down the hill, still feeling very comfortable. One-handed braking, most of that work being handled by that huge 180 millimeter disc brake rotor. Now let's go up to one of the higher levels of assist here. Pretty responsive on the pedal assist. On that last set of strokes, I wasn't pushing very hard. I was trying to test the whole, you know, torque sensing measurement that it does. So this is a multi-sensor. It's a little bit more advanced than uh, some of the just more basic like BBS01, BBS02 mid drives from from years past. I'm I'm thrilled with this setup, and now I think it's time to test this hill. This is definitely an incline. It's pretty steep. And with a 60 pound bike, this would be very difficult to, to pedal with and I would definitely be downshifting. So I'm just gonna use the throttle and see what happens. So far, so good. Can hear it working. I only weigh about 135 pounds. So keep that in mind, but this is still pretty impressive, about seven and a half, eight miles per hour. And this is with like a, a middle gear, okay? So we could make it even easier for the bike with a low gear. Let's try that. I'm gonna go up here, pedal right. Let's, let's see if that does anything. Yeah, you can actually hear it like gaining speed a little bit. And to be able to start halfway up a steep hill like that is amazing. Mid drives are very capable in this sense. And uh, it's part of the reason a lot of bike companies are going to it. The trade-off is that they have to have a custom frame, right? With that like custom bottom bracket interface right there. Um, and again, they call it motion drive, but this is Dapu, which is like a Japanese company. You can see that the frame is made in Taiwan. Uh, guys, I think that's about it. Oh, maybe one final thing I wanna point out because they've got the magnet connected to the spoke and the sensor right here. It feels like it's fairly well protected, but Keep an eye on that because if, if the magnet ever gets bumped out of place, sliding up or down or twisted, you might get like a read error. And that's something that can be pretty simple to fix. I think there's just like a, there we go. Yeah, just like a Phillips head. Um, I'm gonna pedal along in the highest level of assist here, just to give you some idea of the sound that you get from that motor and also how responsive it is. There's definitely a little bit of a, a delay for it to engage and then also disengage, but it's not too bad. Uh, and again, you can override with those brake levers. So let's let's do that. Excellent. This time I'm gonna shift gears or you know change the gear ratio while the motor is active. This is not something that I would really recommend because you are putting additional stress on the NuVinci system. There's still a mechanical system in there and it's it's applying pressure to shift the, the internals. Um, but it's something that you can do without like the banging and mashing that you get on traditional cassette or free will. So let's do that. Cool. So what I was doing is I was twisting the, the half grip shifter up front and I was in the orange mode, which is kind of lets you manually choose your cadence. It doesn't automatically adjust. So it was like a low gear or a high gear and you could hear the motor like That was pretty cool. I want to point out there's no slap guard here on the right chain stay. And I guess that's because we don't really have a chain and this is like a tight belt. There's no shifting going on. There's no derailleur hanging down. It's, it's pretty durable, pretty awesome setup. You just get the extra cost and the extra weight for this sort of a, a drivetrain. Hey guys, I thought it would be fun to take a ride with my friend Judy. Hi, I'm Judy. Nice to meet you. We're just meeting at the park uh, in Coquitlam. And I thought this would be a perfect bike for you, Judy, because it is a little bit 
easier to approach. I mean, this bike weighs like 60 pounds. It's a little bit heavy. Um, and a lot of that weights towards the back, but by doing that, they made the frame very easy to approach. And you're around 5'5", five five, so, yeah. you know, kind of an average size woman. And, and this bike, what do you think of it, just, just looking at it? Uh, like, the color, uh, like, is good. And, uh, you know, like, it's the first time I will try to, like, ride an electronic uh, like bicycles, so awesome. I'm very excited. Awesome. Well, we'll, we'll take our time and everything. We're gonna we're gonna have fun with this. Yeah. I'm excited to teach you about the electronic shifting and stuff because it's very fancy. It's high tech, and you're kind of a high tech girl. You got like your cameras and stuff. We met. We were out filming, um, doing our own blog stuff a while back. Uh, so the first thing that we need to change about the bike is see how high that seat is. Like, look how high yeah, that is. Yeah, it's really high. So the first thing we do. We we'll just, yep, we'll adjust this a little bit. We can take it way down. And I'm actually gonna take it extra low just to start so that you feel really comfortable. Okay. That's as low as it will go unless we like cut the, the seat post. Um, I think that's kind of it. Uh, I turned the bike on over here by pressing the power button. So we do that. And then have you ever ridden like a motorcycle before or something where you have a throttle? Uh, motorcycle, no. Moped, anything like that? Moped, yeah, Moped. I tried that one. Okay, so see this throttle? Mm -hmm. you, you can push that and then it's gonna give you power and it's just gonna, you don't even have to pedal if you don't want to. Okay. So that might be a good thing. First, can you just go ahead and step over the frame and, and grab those handlebars real quick? Great, so see how it feels pretty comfortable, like you, you don't have to hang your foot over the frame or anything? Mm -hmm. Can you go ahead and stow the kickstand, just kind of kick it back? Great job, you're doing excellent. Um, and then it looks like you're pretty close to the saddle. So why don't you just kind of kick off gently and then use the trigger throttle real gently. And then, gently? yeah, just, just go for it. Okay, let me try it. You got it. Oh, oh so cool. Yeah, there oh. you go. Nice, okay, now we gotta stop for a second here because I'm realizing uh, we, we forgot Judy's helmet. So we're gonna swap that out real quick and then we'll go for a little ride. Oh, doesn't she look awesome? We got the glasses going on, we got the helmet. I think that's it. So this is your first ride. Just take your time. Okay. She, we talked about pedal assist, the throttle. You got it. You got it, Judy. Okay. There we go. She was saying it really felt powerful because I think, you know, this is sort of the first time she's ridden an e-bike, especially one with a throttle. We tried to bring it to a safe place, you know, this big gravel, like football field here, soccer field. And uh, what I noticed when I was riding is that the, the rocks kind of get stuck in the tire tread a little bit and they kind of kick up and you hear them like tinking against the fenders a little bit and maybe getting in your shoes. But for the most part, it works really well. Yeah, she's just loving the throttle. <laughs> there we go, now she's pedaling. I can hear the motor a little bit. There you go, nice. Bring it on back. I want to teach you about shifting next. There we go. Okay, cool, cool. So, oh, 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 that's the uh, thing. Just stop it. Like... Anytime you, you do the brakes, it'll stop the motor. Okay. You did a great job. What probably happened there is maybe you pedaled a little or had the There's throttle, the and that can kind of make the bike go. Oh, wow. we, we haven't had any crashes or anything. How do you feel so far? Uh, I can feel like the power of the bicycle. Like uh, I can feel the speed. Uh, and when you like when you're tired, you can just uh, use this one mm -hmm. and to like the, to control like uh, to control the speed or something. Yeah. Yeah, you did a great and job on I it. I think it it like for um, I think uh, for someone who uh, just uh, first time tried this, I think yeah, it's pretty good and it's easy to handle. Yeah, I noticed like right now you're on the seat, but you're able to put your foot down okay. and the bike is is stable. Like you're you're not, yeah, even though it's, it's not, like shaking or something. Not shaking, not tipping. Mm -hmm. Want to talk about shifting a little bit? Uh, shifting? Yeah. So this, if you twist it forward like this, it That's makes what? it easier to pedal. And uh -huh. if you twist it back like that, it makes it harder to pedal. And that way, you know, if you're climbing a hill, you make it easier. Uh -huh. And if you're going fast, you can go the other direction. This silver button changes it from sort of automatic to manual. So let's let's try manual. Let's start you off in a really like low gear. That's easy, okay? Mm -hmm. And once you want to go a little faster, mm -hmm. twist it back. Just twist this. Yeah, kind of while you're riding. Give, go ahead and give that a try. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Good job. 
There we go. So there's the fast cadence. There we go. I can see that rear fender bouncing around a little bit. There we go. Good job. Good job. Perfect. Perfect. Bring it, bring it back. Bring it back. So she's doing an awesome job. I want to point out, um, I just really appreciate these smooth welds that they've got going on on this thing and just being able to start from standstill like you've been doing, either pedaling because it's a torque sensor or using the throttle. How is shifting to you? Was that intuitive or does it feel confusing? What do you think? I think like it's it's not that confusing yeah because I can easily change like uh, this one and yeah like this I can feel like the speed changing yeah. Do you have a regular bike? Uh, not, not, not right now, but have you used one before where there's the trigger shifters? Yeah. Right. And that one I thought, uh, like it was a little bit harder like to change it cause mm -hmm. it's not that I feel like that smooth. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Yeah. It's just transition. like tink, 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 yeah, tink, tink, tink versus like a, uh -huh. yeah, okay, great. Well, you've done a great job on this. Do you mind if I trade off and go for a ride too? It's your turn. Sweet. Sweet. Good job with the kickstand. Awesome job, Judy. High five. <laughs> rock on okay guys so you know we, i was talking about the frame materials and everything it's an aluminum frame and i think avello has done a pretty good job with their extra thick welds up here and making this sort of like oval uh on the the main tubing right here and and that's important for a step through because there is a lot of weight at the rear of the bike and the, the bike can kind of flex a little bit if if you have a step through that's not set up with the bigger tubing so when i shake it see how they the rear of the frame is kind of wiggling a little bit when I do that. It's That's what's called frame flex. Now, when I was riding earlier, I wasn't experiencing speed wobble. This, this frame flex is something that most step throughs have at least a little bit, but I feel like this bike's done a great job um, handling that. And again, the, the welds and everything really smooth. It's really nicely done frame. Um, a lot of times you'll just see like the beading and, and kind of the, the metal that they just welded on, like more like this, but with the frame, see how it's very smooth? that's nicer it's definitely nicer and then the final thing i want to point out is you know judy was just riding this and she's in a higher gear and now i'm going to get on and i'm going to start and this might be you doing this to yourself you might be going fast and then you get to a hill and you forget to downshift well that can be a bummer on a normal bike with with traditional gears on this bike you can actually shift at standstill so see i'm not even pedaling and i can change change gears because again this continuously variable transmission so that's a really nice thing um judy is is new at this and stuff but whether you're you, new or you're just shifting is confusing and you don't want to worry about it being able to shift at standstill is one of the big benefits of having an internally geared hub or continuously variable transmission like this so i think that's it i i shifted down to an easier gear i'm gonna do my little ride test here we go here we go wait a minute wait a minute i got my Somebody left the seat all the way down here. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's See. the other. So I'm I'm really pushing the limits here. There is like a minimum insertion point that's marked on the seat post, so I made sure not to go above that just for safety. And see now I've got the the good leg extension. So anyway, here we go. It's going well. Okay, here, hand, hand me off the camera, Judy. Yeah. I want to show you guys um, some of the sand stuff that I was talking about before. Did you get sand in your shoes too or no? Yeah, a lot. Well, well, okay, <laughs> a lot. So this is, you know, it, we don't get to test water today, but we do get to test sand. Um, you'll notice that the fender and everything, it's its pretty far forward. One thing is if they, if they put the fenders too far out, you can hit your shoes while you're pedaling, but these are actually a pretty good place, even for big shoes like I have. The sand is going to be like water, so you'll see kind of what that would look like. Yeah, so it's bouncing up a little bit. The fender is catching most of it, but uh, it is getting a little bit into my shoes and kind of hitting my shins and stuff. So these fenders are, they're good. Um, also be careful if you're riding on gravel because it can feel a little bit shaky, right? Did you have that too, a little bit unstable at the tight turns? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But the bigger tires do a fairly good job. You know, back to the, the tire choice that Avello had, they have these 
much wider, so higher air volume for comfort, a little bit wider, not quite as efficient, but a lot more stable. So all in all, I think this is a pretty fantastic bike. I'm, I'm always impressed with the Velo. They have good customer support. They make bikes like nobody else makes with like the continuous variable transmission, the belt drive and the frame sizes and stuff. Again, there is an Aurora, which is like a slightly larger, more powerful version of this that could be kind of like the guy's version. Guys tend to be a little bit bigger. Uh, but there's nothing nothing wrong with this if you're like a petite guy for even for me it feels pretty comfortable and i think it looks nice for guys or girls like you kind of like the color right it's yeah, like i like this color it's you know it's not pink but yeah, it's uh, i have a question like what's this one yeah this is for the lock so like we can take the battery off for oh, example oh, this is the battery. that's the battery oh. yeah and actually that's a really good point because this battery is 7.4 pounds so if you need to put this bike on a rack or do service you can mm -hmm. take the battery off or if you're someone who like you got to park it outside and it's raining or it's really hot extreme heat mm -hmm. can be hard on the lithium ion cells and so it's nice that they have a removable battery pack guys i think that's about it um, I've recorded all the details for this bike and Velo was really helpful. They were really responsive when I was asking questions and stuff, probably more than average. And they were more technically um, knowledgeable than some of the other companies that I've, I've looked at in the past. There's definitely trade-offs with this bike, but I think it's definitely one of the better like city models, especially for like petite riders. Uh, for the full written review, I'll see you at electricbikereview.com. Thanks again for your help, Judy. Welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Love y'all. And uh, there is a comparison tool and a forums and stuff that you can check out back at the site. And we'll see you on the next review. There we go. It's her first time going up a hill. She's using the pedal assist. Keeping that balance. Nice job, Judy. We finished filming. She was like, hey, can I keep riding this? Ha, ha, ha.